Hi there. So in this video, we're going to talk about the SN1 reaction. So the SN1 reaction stands for uh, substitution, nucleophilic, so with a nucleophile, uh, and one stands for unimolecular rate determining step. So let's take a look at the reaction mechanism. The first step of the reaction, the leaving group leaves, the carbon leaving group bond breaks. Uh, that leaves a carbocation intermediate, and that carbocation intermediate is trigonal planar. Uh, the solvent also acts as the nucleophile in the reaction. So the nucleophile can enter from either top or bottom of that carbocation intermediate, or left or right, depending on how we've drawn that carbocation intermediate, giving rise to two different possible uh, reaction products. In the last step of the reaction, solvent, a solvent molecule collides with a proton on that new substitution product, uh, deprotonating it and leading to a neutral final product. So we can look at the reaction coordinate diagram for the reaction. Departure of the leaving group and generating that high energy carbocation is the rate determining step of the reaction. Notice there's just one molecule involved in that rate determining step, unimolecular. Next, the collision between the solvent molecule and that carbocation intermediate. And then finally, a, a collision between a solvent molecule um, and a proton on that a forming product, leading us to a, a neutral final product. If we take a look at the stereochemistry for the reaction, again, from that carbocation intermediate, the nucleophile can come in from either side, and so we can have uh, either inversion of configuration, where the nucleophile comes in from the opposite side as the, the leaving group departure, or we can have retention of configuration where that nucleophile has come in from the same side as the leaving group left. You can take a look more deeply at the reasons behind that in the uh, molecular orbital video that addresses the SN1 reaction. Okay, so let's look at an example. Uh, here in this example, I ask you to identify the substitution products for the reaction. Um, so in this case, both C and D uh, are correct possible answers. So C represents an in, uh, a retention of configuration uh, from the starting materials, and D represents an inversion of configuration from the starting materials. So in summary, uh, notice that I'm summarizing here the SN1 and E1 reactions together because they have essentially identical reaction features. So this re these reactions work best if the alpha carbon is tertiary or resonance stabilized, can uh, proceed if, if the alpha carbon is secondary, um, but the reaction is slow to non-existent if the alpha carbon is primary or methyl. Uh, in terms of the leaving group, the leaving group has to be stable enough on its own for that activation energy to be low enough, and so uh, a weak base is best. Uh, in terms of the nucleophile or the base, depending on whether it's substitution or elimination, um, it's weak nucleophiles and bases that, that favor the SN1 and E1 reactions, and typically those are the solvent for the reaction. The solvent is polar protic in nature, and, and that solvent serves to stabilize the transition state um, and the intermediate in, in the, both in the rate determining step and then the carbocation that forms through hydrogen bonding and, and polar interactions. In terms of regiochemistry, for the SN1, we get substitution at the alpha carbon. Um, in the E1 reaction, it's the mo more stable alkene that forms. Uh, in terms of stereochemistry, in the SN1 substitution reaction, we get uh, a mixture of stereoisomers, a mixture of inversion and retention of configuration at that alpha carbon. For the elimination reaction, it's the most stable alkene overall that forms. And if they're equivalent, we simply get a mixture of products. Watch out for rearrangements. Those happen at the point of the formation of the alpha carbon. That's going to be covered in the next, in the next video. So one of the big challenges with these reactions is that they can form a massive number of products. Uh, look at the five different products on screen that can be formed from this single uh, starting point. So in the lab, there are some things we can do. We can heat things up to try to favor an E1 over SN1. It doesn't always work. Um, so often it's just a mess of products. So synthetically speaking, chemists will often try to avoid these kinds of reactions, except with very specific substrates. Um, in nature, we see a lot of examples of these reactions and they're controlled by enzymes. And so just the way the, the enzyme is, is arranged sort of holds the substrates, the reacting molecules in place, um, allows formation of very precise products. And the, for the purpose of this course, we'll stop at the point where we get a mixture of products that form. And between the alkenes, for example, you should be able to identify which ones are major and minor. But after that, just know that it's a mixture. 